Shine bright like a diamond Shine bright like a diamond Find life in the beautiful sea I choose to be happy You and I, you and I We're like diamonds in the sky You're a shooting a star I see A vision of ecstasy When you hold me, I'm alive We're like diamonds in the sky I knew that we Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Ella Harry. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, um, this is a slightly different video from what you would usually see. But I hope you guys like it. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave any comments that you have. And if you like, if you actually enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. This is Libby Thomas. I am from Edmonton, Alberta. My background is Jamaican and German, um, but a lot of <laughs> multi-ethnic mixes. My name is Sarah Wilda Merriam. I am currently a student at the University of Alberta. I am a fifth year and I am 22. My name is Mergen Walaka. Walaka. And I am from Nigeria originally. I'm Igbo and right now I currently am living in Edmonton. Canada as an international student. Um, being black to me means a lot of things, but I think historically and still presently it means struggle. So if I go back to my ancestry, which is not necessarily shared by a lot of black people, when you look at the Atlantic slave trade and having a hundred million Africans stolen off the continent, ten million of them survived, only to be placed in a situation where they were socially subordinate to and not even citizens of the countries in which they were placed um, and enslaved, of course. Um, and I think that that history is still very pervasive um, and it still informs a sort of social consciousness um, and a whole lot of ways in which um, the black identity is structured today. And so that's why I think being black to me means, it means struggle. By my my beautiful skin color, black does not justify my eyes, black does not justify my hair color. That's what Black History Month is about, like celebrating ourselves and just like telling people why we matter, like why we're important. And everyone's in. We all play basketball or sing or we're, you know, professional, we're capable, or we are professional athletes, or um, for women particularly with the black identity, you know, sexually promiscuous. Um, we have attitudes, we're loud. Um, yeah, we just don't like being told what to do. Um, we're angry. We're, we're always there's always angry black yeah, women. Angry black women, yeah. And no one understands why black women are angry, but black women do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that all just kind of plays into this whole stereotype that black people are really nothing more than entertainment. Right. So like, Beyonce's always been black, but now that Beyonce is more than entertainment, this is where people are taking offense to her new video release to Formation because Beyonce was fine when she was an entertainer and when she was entertaining us um, and being more or less, not that she was never political, but she, I think her politics were always maybe more ambiguous than they are now, but it's like as soon as, now that, now that she's transcended that entertainment realm, this is where the problem is. Oh, you're actually black now. So. Right, that other people have stories about me that might not be the stories I have about myself. So that's why I think Black History Month is important for me personally because it's about showing my, expressing my blackness the way I see it and celebrating my history from my point of view personally, but then also sharing with people that might not know as much as I do about it and want to learn about this, you know? So it's, it's, I think it's important. I think there should be more reflecting going on around Black History Month um, and 
you know, about the Haitian. Of the stereotype that's been built up about us that we are more athletic than they are, that is not true. We work out. <laughs> uh, the second thing is people have this stereotype about us that we are more musically capable than they are. That is also not true. We are in churches, we sing all the time together. It's just something that we've always done as children. This is more of a culture thing. This is not necessarily a black people thing. And black girls, what do I think? I think for black girls, the stereotype is our whole entire body. Starting from our hair, all the way down to our toes. I think people like to sexualize black girls a lot in their bodies and like to make it seem as though we are different genetically, we are not. That you and of yourself is more than what any person could have asked for. Things, if you think about it too much, it's almost depressing. And I don't think you're going to live your life the way some people are like, oh, black girls have huge ass lips. Black girls have Afro hair that's just unprofessional. Black girls have hair that just looks like it's dirty and they don't even comb it. Why you younger black self didn't know she was black almost? So I think that um, in today's terminology, when someone says to me that they're colorblind, I'm actually kind of offended by it um, because I think that if, if you're not seeing color, if you're not seeing you know what I, what I visibly am, and seeing me as black, you're you're sort of denying sense of my identity. But when I was younger, I used to say something like. Oh, I grew up in a family where we're colorblind because, you know, my mom's white, my dad's black, and we're like milk chocolate. So I create these all these like cute little analogies and ways for people to digest where, who I was and where I came from. But at the same time, I never identified as black. Um, and part of that was probably because I let people who were non-black tell me what black meant. And a lot of the times those people that were telling me what black meant, um, meant black to be something that I should not identify as. I mean, whether that was in my own personal family or the community I grew up in, which was predominantly white, um, my younger black self should not have listened to non-black voices tell me what it meant to be black. Um, and my younger black self, I wish, I'd, I wish that I could have told her that um, being biracial does not mean that you're not black. So um, you see this quite often and I've noticed it now with my younger brothers um, and even young um, other biracial individuals that um, we're supposed to always assume a middle ground, um, whether it's politically or racially. And sometimes we do, like I think that we play a very important role in terms of a bridge between cultures, um, but at the same time, um, I could not be biracial unless I was black, so I wish that I could have been able to uh, identify as that sooner because I had a lot of negative perceptions about what it meant to be black. Also, I would have told my younger um, self um, to not cry in the mirror over her hair, which I straightened every day of my life from the time I was 8 to 15 because I thought it was so ugly. Um, my younger black self should have been more confident and more proud of <laughs> literally her roots. Um, yeah, I wish my younger black self would have known all those things. Do you, sweetheart, do you for all of this nonsense out in this world right now? <laughs> education is the cure. You just gotta let people know. Back at everything, I'm honestly not that old actually. I'm 19. But looking back at like my younger years, I would definitely tell myself to be more confident because growing up, white people were glorified even on Disney Channel. I watched Disney Channel a lot. So even on like Disney Channel and like movies, like white people were like holy grail. So I just felt like you had to be somewhat lighter to actually be considered beautiful or confident but now that I think about it I'm just like I if I was more confident when I was growing up I feel like my self-esteem would have been 
next level but that's okay um so yeah, i would definitely tell my younger self or my daughter be confident like you are just beautiful the way you are like you don't need to change anything you don't need to fit in there's no such thing as bad hair don't take too seriously what people say opinion would always be opinions stereotypes would always be stereotypes so i can keep going on and on and on and at the end of the day there would be a lot said but in the end I would just like to say like we should all learn to be ourselves and um, appreciate where we're from and this month is for us black people to appreciate ourselves so like happy black history month to black people everywhere like North America, Caribbean, South America, the motherland, Africa especially like we've been through a lot, we'll get through a lot and I believe that there will be one time where no one, absolutely no one would doubt or question how excellent and beautiful and glorious it is to be 100% black or anything.